Good morning, Joey. Monday morning. In, well, into good, but I mean, we've had a fantastic week in us. It's been really, really good. And drop a rain, drop a rain winner. It does. It'll do all the plants. I expect some of them are want a bit of refreshing. So uh, let's just enjoy the drop of rain. It's going to be fine again before the week is out. So that's lovely. Now, I want to say um, thank you to everybody that has helped to contribute to our. We did a talk on Friday night about the, well, Rick Rescola, the hero, Hale's hero from 9 11. We raised a fantastic sum of uh, 521 pounds and five pence. Um, this all goes help towards the, which we've got the sound system and the TV and got a couple of sockets to go in yet in the day center. But uh, what a fantastic achievement. I want to thank all the, the businesses that have supported us as well. And the, well, everybody, the community for coming and all. We had, uh, I think it was well over 70 people there Friday evening. It was warm inside, but... Um, I think most of them enjoyed it anyhow that's the most of the thing most important part but i want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart for all your fantastic support i'm not going to be raising i shed my chest and nobody now for a week or two or raise any more money so um and um also yesterday we have the um well we had the heritage center really it was all to, um or heritage day it was all to do with <clears throat> um the dialect and music and it was a really fantastic day again down the day center so um, I don't know what we raised, but we had pastas and uh, saffron buns and we had everything really. And I, again, I think the, the businesses that supported us for this event. So uh, it was it was certainly well, um, you know, supported. That's what I would say. Yes, it really was absolutely fantastic. So uh, I say I'm glad that's over now. So uh, that's even better. Now, birthdays. What have we got? Uh, we've got... Well, we know uh, Liam Bent is our neighbour here. It was his birthday on Saturday. Darren Pemberthy, it was his birthday on Saturday. And Amelia Krakioff, um, it was her birthday on Saturday. So happy birthday to all you there on Saturday. And um, yes, it was Elizabeth Carn's birthday yesterday, which was Sunday. And then our great man of ale there, our um, top man, Mr. Clacky. He's coming, he's doing really, really well. It was his birthday yesterday. He didn't want nobody to know nothing about it, so I said I wouldn't mention nothing. He was 88 yesterday. Uh, Brian Caffers is today. Happy birthday to you, Brian. And I hope you have a lovely day. And also, a, my, a dear friend of mine, Dominic Palmer, um, his birthday is on Wednesday. So that's all them in the way. Now, I'm just going to do a story here today. I call this one's called Ben Err. Well, I said, says I to myself, another night out, help and feather, get some broccoli. See, down west here, we'd call them broccoli, not cauliflower. Anyhow, feather and mother and us children, we'd live in a two-down and two-up house at the end of a long lane. So we used to sell broccoli and cabbages on our seasonal and other seasonal veggies on a little stall outside our front door. Mother kept eye out, see who was buying this, hope to keep the food on the table, mother used to say. People came for miles to buy our fresh veg. Of course, when Feather come home from work and had his tea, right, boys, he'd say, let's get some fresh veggies. I could never understand why we had great in the dark evenings in winter to get veggies. Feather says that's because broccoli and cabbages have hurts, so it's best to cut them back once it's dark so it's not to hurt them feelings. We always went into different fields every time all over the place. My job was to hang on to the donkey and cart near the gate and whistle if anybody was around. If anyone stopped to speak, I always say, the donkey's having a rest. We'd load up the cart with our fresh veggies, take them home, tidy them up a bit, ready for the stall in the morning. But our first job was, when I got home, was to make sure um, everybody had been down to the lab. You know, that's the bottom of the garden, the bucket and chocolate business. I remember them doing because we stored all our fresh veggies in the lab overnight, so it was nice and fresh in the morning. One night out in the fields, Feather fell down, leg all blowed up like a croaking. We had enough veggies, so home we to go. Next day, Feather said, it's time for Decky, my older brother and me, to start learning to drive a cart. Of course, Decky had a third eye, so he saw two of everything. Hitch up the young one, said Feather. That's Ben, the new donkey. And wheels taking down the lane for a bit of girt out. And before we went, Feather ordered into the scullery at Mother. What's for tea? Oh, pasta, she replied. Oh, I thought, I'll be waiting for that, because my energy is cracking. Donkey old harnessed up feather says, I'll go with you boys to show you to show you the ropes. Decky, you do the first bit going down the lane. 
See, I was a bit flummoxed because Father had a clothes peg on his nose. What's that for? I asked Feather. Well, see, boy, now he's been spreading dung along all these here fields and it affects my breathing. Faster we went, the worse the smell. Little did Dickie and myself nor mother used to feed the donkeys all the leftover broccoli and cabbages for their tea. Luckily, Father didn't light up his pipe, I thought to myself. Suddenly, Ben took the eels, gone like a whippet he was, down the bumpy lane, cart was going from side to side. Dickie strong as all, so as a fist, and a fist screwed up like a fitcher ferret was pulling on them reins, but no good. I was holding on to Father's swollen leg, and he was hollering like a banshee, like the, like the film in the Ben Hur we was, in some coddle. Telly, then out of the corner of my eye, I seen Mrs. Tiddlywinkle crossing the lane. We'd have called her that, because butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. I hollered to her, but she never, but she never see, said bean or bow, looking at us like a stewed owl. Of course, Dickie with a third eye had to go into the ditch. Over we went, feather straight over on the edge into a field of broccoli. Ben broke loose and galloped on. Feather stood up, looking a bit wished to the Dickie and me. Nice broccoli in them fields here, boy. After tay we come down here one, one dark night. So long, haven't got time to stop now. See you a bit directly. Take care.